Welcome once again to Vehicle Maintenance and Repairs at Tom, Gary Delacruzzi, host and mechanic. Today we've got a special treat. Um, it's a blast from the past. Uh, if you've ever heard of the 1400 Nissan Bucky, uh, you know, the little rear-wheel drive uh, Bucky, which was very, very popular in the late 80s and the 90s. Um, we've got one here today in immaculate condition, uh, but it's here for the service. So um, without further ado, let me show you the vehicle and show you how to service this vehicle. Yeah, so the Nissan 1400 Champ, which we're going to be servicing. Okay, as I said, these cars were very popular at one stage because they are, well, they would probably be popular today still because they are pretty light on gas. This is an old rear wheel drive, so it does have a prop shot with a diff at the back. Okay, and inside it's very basic. It's got a bench seat, which is hardly adjustable. Your handbrake is right here. Okay, it's got normal, uh, you know, uh, window winders, nothing electric. Um, inside you basically just have a, a steering wheel and you have your speedo. You know, there's no rev counter. And then you have your temperature gauge and your fuel gauge, you know, and all your lights, like your charge light, handbrake light, oil light, high beam. You know, it has a manual choke because it's a carburetor model. It's five-speed manual. Some of them were four-speed. Okay, um, basic, no aircon, you know, just a normal blower. You know, a three-speed blower, uh, obviously. It had a little cubby all over there where you could keep your essentials. Okay, very compact inside, uh, you know, uh, decent, head, uh, decent headroom, but very compact, you know, so taller, bigger guys normally had a problem fitting into this vehicle. But anyway, let's go and look at the engine. Okay, so there we go. Okay, um, everything's basically manual. We still had all point and condenser in the distributor over there. There's nothing electronic here. The only electric thing is the coil <laughs> and, of course, the spark plugs, the carburetor. Okay, it's got an air filter over here, you know, there's an oil filter down there, okay, which we need to replace, and there's a petrol filter over there, okay, a radiator, you know, water, very simple, very simple car, was cheap to maintain in its day even, okay, so um, what we're going to do is we get some flush into this engine. Okay, so down below we have a plate, okay, with four size uh, 10 bolts that we need to take off out of the way. Um, we can actually get to the sump plug. Okay, sump plug is right here, where my finger is. Okay, the sump plug is right there, but when we take the air filter off, we're gonna mess all over. So it's best just to take this cover off. So with the cover off, you can now see the oil filter. It's a Z84. You can see the some plug over there. I'm not going to bother to jack this car up, okay, it's high enough for me to do the oil change um, without having to jack the car, okay. Okay, so my service kit is as follows. It's an AG858 uh, air filter, some Spaniard uh, engine flush, a Z84 oil filter, some 15W40 oil, a BC2, uh, BC2 a GOD for, um, petrol filter. We've got some uh, BP65, uh, is it BP5 ES spark plugs? We've got a set of uh, EP300 uh, condenser and then we've got a CS351 um, points. Okay, so that's basically what our basic service kit um, comprises of. Alright, this kit costs in the region of about 900 rand. Okay, um, uh, not 900, it's actually just under a thousand rand, so it's 900 and odd rand. Uh, pr uh, actually surprisingly expensive. The air filter itself was almost 400 bucks, you know, so uh, that basically explains, uh, you know, the high, the high cost there. But, um, you know, the air filter, as you know, this, these parts are good for a year. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, do this, the service, get all these parts with it. So ensuring that that engine is fairly warm, okay, you don't want to add flush into a, a cold engine, okay, so we'll open up the flush. I always check the security seal, you know, if the security seal is not in place, then I, I would return the product and, and, and demand one with the security seal in, in place. Because if there's no security seal in place, what guarantee do I have that this is actually genuine Spaniard engine flush in here? Alright, so just be wary of that. We pour the flush in, directly into the dirty oil. 
put the we'll pull the cap back and get the car started. Um, let it run for uh, let it run for uh, fifteen minutes. So we have four items. We have fifteen minutes. Okay. I'll get back to you when the 15 minutes are expired. So our time's up. Uh, we do need just to switch off the engine. We need to take the cap off. I need to take the cap off. I take the dipstick out as well. Quite simply, we take a 22 size 22 spanner. Okay, we loosen up the sump nut. Have the receptacle in place so that we can just drain that oil out of the sump. Okay, you can see there goes the oil. Alright, we're draining the oil and then once that is at a trickle, we will go and turn our attention to removing the oil filter. Okay, get the chain that on the filter. And get the filter loosened up. Like so. Once it's loose enough to turn by hand, we'll turn it by hand and get that filter all drained out. Okay, so while we're down there, we'll just go. We'll get a new filter, okay? Put some uh, oil on that seal and we'll just get the filter turned on the new filter turned on. Okay, turn it on as tight as you can by hand. Okay, and then we'll just give that filter a good wipe to get rid of our grease marks there. Okay, make our job look a bit neater. So that's our new filter fitted. Okay, we still got a bit of a trickle on the oil, so we'll give that some more time. So while we're waiting for the for the oil to stop dripping, we can go ahead and remove our air filter. We'll go ahead and remove our air filter. There's one, two, and one clip at the bottom. Okay, which we need to loosen up. And once we've got that loose, we can just pull the, the unit off. Take the air filter out, okay? Alright, so with the new air filter, we'll just simply put it into the into the attachment, and then you do have a. If you look at the, you see you got a, a mark at the top, okay? There's a little nipple on it there, so that'll go into. Here's a little cleft here, where my finger is. So we'll put that. We'll put that nipple into the cleft, okay, lining everything up nicely. We'll put the clip back, and that's how simple it is to basically um, replace the air filter. The petrol filter is equally simple, I'll show you now. Okay, so we've got our air filter in place there. Okay, so we have to get these pipes. To come off the filter, needs a bit of encouragement there. Okay, that just puts over here. Okay, that's the old filter off there. It's actually this one is a BC1. The new one, as you can see, is a BC2, which is the right filter for the scope. Okay, it's not going to make a hell of a difference because it is a plastic filter. Okay, it's not like a high pressure filter. We're doing it. You know, a lot of the new cars nowadays don't even take a re new uh, replaceable petrol filter. You know, it's what you call a in-tank filter. Okay, so we'll just put our pipe back here with our clamps. Make sure everything is nice and tight. Because we don't want this thing leaking petrol. And it is a, a mechanical petrol pump down there. So we need to take that filter and we need to put it back into its little holder, okay? So 
Okay, now replacing the spark plugs are pretty simple, but we have to take the these um, plug wires out of the way. And now we got to remember because the distributor uh, basically turns. Uh, let's let's open it up. Okay, the distributor cap, and we'll just see when we turn the engine clockwise, which way does the rotor turn? So the rotor turns anti-clockwise. Okay, so the firing order will go anti-clockwise. Remember that. So the firing order here is one, three, four, two. Okay. So one, three, four, and two. So we just remember where number one is. I normally tie a knot. Okay, in the plug wire. Then I know that that's number one. Okay. We might as well take off the distributor cap all the way because we're going to be replacing um, the points and condenser inside the distributor. I'll also take the the rotor off. Now if you look at the rotor you will see that the rotor's got two uh, flat end on it and it's got a flat end on the on the shaft, the distributor shaft. So it can only go on that way. Okay, it can't go on any other way. It's just got a foot with that flat end slotting in there. Okay, so we'll take the rotor out of the way as well. And now we'll just simply, we will just simply remove the spark plugs. I normally just use a speed wrench to speed things up. Okay. That's what the spark plugs, the spark plugs actually don't look too bad. Okay. But let's just replace everything here. So we'll go ahead and remove all the spark plugs from these boxes. The main thing that we check for is we make sure that the gap is not closed up. Okay, all four of them, just make 100% sure that the gaps are not closed. Once we're happy the gaps are not closed up, we can just turn them in by hand, give them a bit of thread, make sure that they don't cross thread. Okay, initially. And then we can go ahead and tighten the spark plugs once they were all threaded in. So basically the distributor has what we call contact points over there and a condenser. Okay, and those are the replacement parts on these vehicles, you know, when we do servicing or when we do tune-ups on them. Okay, so we're going to loosen up the two anchor points there, the, the two screws that are holding the points uh, in position, and then we'll pull the, the points out. We'll take the points and remove them like that. It's got what we call a pigtail wire over there that, uh, you know, gives it power. All right, so we have to loosen that wire. Okay, we have to loosen that wire, pull the wire out, and then just take the points out of the way. Okay, so you can see normally when you look at points, you got to look at, you know, the, 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 the ends to see if they bent. Okay, that's, that is now a new set of points which we are going to fit. There's a few things to watch here when you fit these, these points. Okay, um, number one, if you look at the pigtail wire, Okay, the pigtail wire, it's got to come with a nice curl, okay, over like that. It mustn't have any sharp bends, okay, because this base plate basically um, works like this. Whenever the car accelerates, the vacuum advance activates the base plate, you know, which advances the points, you know, so that they open up sooner. And, um, you know, if you, you're going to get this at uh, this action all the time, you're going to get that action. But if you have a sharp bend there, it's eventually going to snap the wire off. Okay, so we don't want that. And then of course we'll normally take a rag and we'll get rid of any excess, excess oils on the base plate. Okay, we call that the base plate and then we'll also wipe off 
the shaft you know because there's normally grease on there to lubricate the points so the points don't wear down too quickly so we normally take the old grease off and we put new grease on okay but let's just do this methodically let's get the points so what we'll do is we we'll loosen up the, 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 the anchor bolt, the anchor screw on the points we'll just loosen it up a little bit so that we can get the pigtail wire you know put in All right so we'll take our wire okay ensuring that the wire has a nice bend in it as I said okay the wire we'll take we'll curl around and then we'll just anchor get that that wire tightened up inside the points there. these points has a little uh, we, we, call it, uh, we call it a pipi, <laughs> over there where my thumb is. Okay, it's a protrusion, and there's a hole in the base plate over there. Okay, so we want that little pipi to go into the, into the base plate, and on top of that as well, you will see there's an earth wire that's held down by this one screw. You want your points to go under the earth wire. So the earth wire must lay on top of the points. The pipi must go in the hole, and you must have your your two ends of your points you must have um, nicely so that you can tighten it down and lock the points in position once they sit okay can you see that movement that is that is basically how we set the points okay so you can you can open the points or close the points I'm going to show you now exactly how we do it properly and then what we'll do is we'll first just turn the screws down lightly Okay, just to just to make sure that the points are sort of more or less in the in the right spot. You see this little uh, uh, clip on here. Also, make sure it doesn't touch the side of the distributor because the distributor's the body is actually earth. Okay. Now, here's the important thing: make sure the car is in gear, and then also now you turn you turn the the the, the engine so you see this this distributor lobe. You know, um, this distributor shaft, it's got four lobes on it for, for each cylinder, one for each cylinder. So we got to make sure that that lobe, you see there's the lobe over there. Okay, so if I turn the engine, you will see now that the, let's just open the points a little bit. Okay, now look at the gap here, okay. As we move the points, the, the gap will open. See that? That points gap is now open over there. Now if I turn the engine off the lobe, you will see the points will close. Okay. You see the points is closed now. Okay, so if I turn it back up onto that lobe, okay, the points will open. Can you see how the points open? Now we need to turn that um, points onto the highest part of the lobe so we can do the final setting. The point gap setting is between 0.45 of a mole and uh, 0.55 of a mole. Okay, so I am going to take a 0 0.550 feeler gauge, okay, and it's just, just got to go in between that gap there. It mustn't open the points any further. That gap has scrapped. So that gap is basically um, the right gap. Okay, it's 0.5 of a mole. So remember, we now need to lock up, and now you got to make sure that that wire doesn't go and run up against the. Okay, doesn't go and run up against the the shaft because if you remember that this middle shaft is the one that turns all the time. So we've got our point set at 0.5 of a millimeter. Okay, that feeler gauge just just goes in there. All right. Now, you see what happens when the engine turns. The points will close, okay, and then when it comes up to the next lobe, the points will open. You see, so that happens all the time. We have to put a little bit of grease on, on, a, on our shaft. Okay, I'll show you now. I'll take a little bit of grease like that on a screwdriver, and we'll put it onto the shaft, okay, around the shaft. Because as the distributor turns, okay, that shaft needs to be lubricated because it's rubbing up against that Bakelite piece over there on the points, okay? And if we don't have uh, grease on there, it's going to wear that Bakelite piece down. And if the Bakelite piece wears down, 
then you know the points are going to close up and when the points close up the timing retards okay the timing becomes goes back a little bit and that makes the car um, lose power you know it's not as efficient as it, as it, as it should be so we put our distributor um, our rotor on and as I said you know you'll get that flat part of the of the of the shaft there okay and the rotor has a flat part that metal piece where my thumb is that goes over and that basically locks our our rotor in position okay so just remember um, you know to set the points right okay at the, on the high part of the lobe that is really important all right so now we put our cap back our distributor cap back and we've got to put our wires into the right position okay because if we put the wires on the wrong way then we are going to be in a little bit of trouble all right because we've got to know uh, which one is one so remember i tied a knot in number one Okay, so that's number one. I'll put that plug wire on. We'll go anti-clockwise to the next one, which is three, because the firing order goes one, three, four, two. And then we put number four on, and then we put number two on. Okay, so it's one, three, four, two. Okay, so that is basically replacing points and plugs on this Nissan 1400 Bucky. Now we need to put the sump plug back, put in clean oil, and get it started. Okay, so we'll take our sun plug. Okay, we'll put our sun plug with a new washer, and I normally put some nice threading tape on it. Okay, we'll put that, we we'll turn it in hand tight. We'll turn it in hand tight, and then we'll use our 22 spanner, size 22 spanner. Now we've turned the sun plug in. Okay, we'll turn it by hand if we can, or most of the way, and we'll tighten it with our 22 spanner. So we've got our oil filter in, our new oil filter, we've got our sun plug in. So now we're going to put oil, we'll fill the oil up. Okay, so I'm going to start out with 3 litres of oil, pull the stick out. And see, huh, showing nothing yet. So we'll put in another half liter. I think it's full on the full mark now. Right? On the full mark. So let's get this car started. Light went out after a couple of seconds. All right, engine seems to be running quite nicely. We just switch it off again. Okay, let's check the oil. Wipe the dish stick. Check the oil. And then I find that he's gone a bit low again. Okay, after we started the car and the oil filter spilled up. So we're gonna put in another, I'd say another half liter. So that'll bring it up to four liters. Eh? So that'll bring the capacity of this little engine to four liters. Check again. Yeah, back up to the full mock. Okay, so four liters of oil with the Nissan 1400 bucky. All right, so that's basically the basic service, okay? Uh, look, I perform a 50-point inspection on the car, all right, which I'm still going to be doing now. Um, so I check that the lights work, I check ball joints, tyro dens, I check brakes, you know, I, I make sure that the handbrake holds properly, that the wipers are working properly, you know, that every, all the safety uh, bits of the car, you know, is, is in order. But... Uh, the basic service of changing the oils uh, and the focus and the points um, I've just shown you now. Okay, so um, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.
Okay, so that was the servicing of the Nissan 14 and the Bucky, a blast from the past. Thanks for joining me. Um, thanks for your subscription. Um, you know, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, I always like to hear from you guys, so commit, uh, comment below. I'd like to hear your opinions, you know, and what you think of uh, the videos that um, get produced here at vehiclemaintenanceandrepairs.com. Up until the next video, um, drive carefully. See you soon. Cheers.